Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicola and in today's class we are looking uh, to improve the uterine lining quality and just make it more receptive and ready for the embryo to implant. So I, on the, my Instagram channel I also have plenty of posts on uh, not only when it comes to yoga but on lifestyle changes and diet uh, that you can do uh, to support the uterine lining, the endometrium. So I will make sure to put the link down below so you can check it out as well. You can take a seat, you will not need any props today, any way that is comfortable to you. And we will start by calming down and soothing your nervous system a little bit with a breathing technique. So it's called alternate uh, nostril breathing and you can grab your right hand and place the index and the middle finger in between your eyebrows. And then you can close the left nostril with your ring finger and exhale fully through the right nostril. Take a deep breath in through the right nostril again. Close it with your thumb, open the left nostril and exhale. Inhale through the left again. Close it with the ring finger, open the right nostril and exhale. So like this we did a full round and let's do it again. Inhale through the right. Close it, open the left nostril, exhale. Inhale back. Close the nostril with your ring finger, open the thumb, exhale. And we will do a few more rounds, just follow your own breath. I will not disturb you. Take your time to finish the round you are doing, no rush. And once you finish, you can place your hands onto your knees. Hopefully this breathing technique brought you a bit more to here and now, to the mat. Got you slow down. And just observe your breath now, how it flows. Whether it is fast or slow, deep or shallow. And where do you breathe in? Is your chest expanding or is it the belly? 
take a moment to notice these things. And once you are ready, you can slowly open your eyes and come onto your hands and knees into the tabletop position. So, starting to warming up, you can place your hands underneath the shoulders, the knees under the hips. We will do a few rounds of cat and cow. So, on the inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze up. Exhale, push against the mat. Inhale, drop the belly. Exhale, round the back. A few more like this. One more round. And release. Let's do some hip circles so you can bring the hips towards the right, then forward to the left and back, almost sitting back on the heels. And make it feel intuitive so whatever feels good doesn't look doesn't matter how it looks like just bringing some movement into the hips you can switch direction and let it be free the hips so now you can maybe isolate the hips only moving the pelvis in circles switch direction and release Bring the right foot in between your hands for low lunge. So make sure that the foot is in front of the knee, that the knee doesn't go past the foot, the ankle. And keep pressing the hips lower. You can look forward. And we will not stay here. We will make it a little bit more flowy. So then you can extend the front leg and stretch it out. Feel it in the back side of your leg. And come back to low lunge. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Inhale, low lunge. And let's do two more like this. Just follow your own breath. Now stay in the half splits with the leg extended. And you can come all the way back to take a seat. So you keep the right leg extended and bring the left foot to your inner thigh, the right inner thigh, coming with the head towards the knee. So you can inhale, rise the arms up. And exhale, reach for the foot as far as you can get. doesn't have to be too far, just as long as you feel a nice stretch in the hamstring, also in the spine, maybe even in the side body. Come back with the arms up. Exhale, release. Cross your feet, bring the 
hands forward to the top of the mat, coming into our first downward facing dog. So you can tuck the toes under and lift the hips up. Any movement that feels good here, paddling the feet, maybe bending one knee at a time. Relax the upper body, the neck. Listen to what your body needs in the moment. Now walk your feet to meet the hands in front of the mat. Widen your stand so the feet are as wide as the mat. Grab the opposite elbows and sway from side to side. Definitely keep a bend in the knees. Releasing the spine, the upper body but also stretching into the back side of the legs. And release the hands down and come all the way up to stand. Release. Bring the feet a bit closer, about hip width distance apart. Shine the palms forward and close your eyes. Just a moment here in Tadasana, the mountain pose. Feel the feet grounded into the mat. And we will take our flow. So inhale, rise the arms up, look up. Exhale, fall down. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, the hands are on the shins. Exhale, come into plank, stay here for a breath. Lower your knees to lower onto your belly. Inhale for cobra. And exhale, tabletop position. Switching sides, so now the left foot comes in between the hands for low lunge. Press the hips closer to the ground. And not staying here, let's add the motion. So come into half split, stretch it out. No lunge. Exhale for the stretch. Inhale forward and three more like this just with your own breath, your own pace. And the next time you stretch the front leg, you can sit all the way back, bringing the right foot to the left inner thigh. Extend your arms up. Inhale and exhale, fall down towards the left leg. You might notice that one leg is more awkward than the other. That's completely normal. Don't for your, force yourself to do the exact same thing on the left side as well. Release, arms back up. Exhale, cross at your ankles, finding our downward facing dog again. The feet are about hip width distance apart, the hands about shoulder width distance apart. Stretch everything out. And walk the feet to the front of the mat. Come in again into the ragdoll fold, so widen your stand, bend your knees and hold onto the opposite elbows. 
and sway from side to side. Release the hands down and come all the way back up. Feet closer towards each other. The hands are shining forward a moment in Tadasana. You can close your eyes. Feel both feet grounded into the mat. All corners of the feet are in contact with the mat. A moment to slow down, to notice your energy, maybe the internal dialogue that is running through your head. You can open your eyes and we will come with the feet to the shorter ed edges of the mat to be parallel. And then we will turn the heels in, toes out. And you can bend the knee generously, coming into big squat, goddess pose. Staying here for a moment, so find the position so it's somehow comfortable. It's a strong pose though, so it's not as comfortable as some others, like Shavasana. Let's stay here. And let's add emotion again. So inhale, rise the arms up, straighten the legs, straighten them. Exhale, back down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend the knees. Few more like this. One more round. And exhale, bring the hands to the front of the heart. And the same stand, just we want to make the feet parallel to the shorter edges of the mat so the heels are no longer in there. Parallel. Staying in this wide stand, coming into a forward fold. So on the inhale, you can look up. And exhale, start lowering down. Place your hands in between the feet. Take a moment so you are even, your weight is evenly distributed. Not leaning backwards or falling forward too much. And we will stay with the left hand on the mat and we will raise the right arm up for a twist to the right side. Come back down, switch the arms, the left one opens to the side. And one more on each side. And relax. Still stay here in this forward fold for a moment. And you can toe heel the feet so they come closer, maybe a bit wider than heel with distance apart. The heels are in the toes out like we had in goddess pose just now, this smaller variation. And you can come all the way down with your hips for Malasana, the yogi squat. You can use your hands maybe for support if you are feeling like you might fall. Or you can place them in front of your heart and using the elbows to open the knees a little bit wider.
close your eyes if you find your balance. Take deep belly breaths in and out through the nose. You can stay here or you can add twists like we did right now. So you can place the left hand in the middle in front of you and open the right arm to the side and up towards the ceiling. Switching sides. And one more on each side. And back to the stale version. And you can release the hands onto the mat and come to take a seat. Let's lie down on our backs. And bring the soles of the feet together to touch and drop the knees to the sides for butterfly. Create this Yoni Mudra with your hands so the thumbs touch, the index fingers touch and you're creating this a triangle shape with your hands and you can place this mudra onto your lower belly, onto your womb. Feeling this connection with your womb. In this pose we are opening this area, the inner groin, inner thighs. And imagine your womb to be nice and warm, receptive. The uterine lining thick enough, nourished, full of blood and ready for the embryo to implant. You might have noticed that we did a few twists in today's practice and that's because twists are wonderful also to get the blood flow moving in the body to improve digestion because by squeezing the internal organs we stop the blood flow for a moment and then by releasing there is just like a fresh splash of blood and that's what we want in the reproductive organs. And the twists are wonderful to do before and during ovulation, but I wouldn't recommend them after ovulation when you are in your two week wait. In that time, we want to make this ara as loosened up as possible. And twists can be just a little bit too much in this time. Bring your knees back up. And bring your feet closer to your butt. Still about hip width distance apart. Rest your arms alongside your body. And on the inhale, Raise the hips up, coming into bridge pose. So press against the feet, the feet against the mat. Make sure the thighs are together, they are not opening to the sides. 
and take a few breaths here. Make the breaths really deep into your belly. And come out of the pose slowly. And before we come into Shavasana, our final resting pose, we will have one more twist, supine spinal twist. So you can keep the knees bent, just bring the hips a bit towards the right and just drop the knees to the left side. And you can extend your right arm to the side and look towards the right if it's okay for your neck. Close your eyes. And both shoulder blades should still be in contact with the mat. It's just about the mid and lower back. Come back to center, move the hips to the left and drop the knees to the right. Come back to center and you can straighten both legs, also the arms, the palms are facing up. And we will take a few moments here in Shavasana to relax fully, to integrate the work we have just done. And to give the body the time to integrate it as well. Just last moments that you have to yourself, nowhere to be, nothing to do now. Slowly start coming back into the present moment. You can move your toes, your fingers. Make the movements bigger. Anything that feels good, any stretches. You might feel like yawning as well. That's a good sign. 
and then roll onto one side and slowly come back up. You can close your eyes, keep them closed if you are comfortable, or you can close them again once you are back to a seated, safe position. Bring the hands to the front of the heart for Anjali Mudra. And we will finish and seal this practice with a chant of Om together one time. So take a deep breath in to chant. Oh. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to my channel just to show me some love and support. And I hope that you will join me for some videos in the future as well. Enjoy your day. Bye.